Welcome to the Royals of Malibu cast interview part one. I'm Emma DeMuth and I work behind the scenes on the story development of the show. Sit back, grab a treasure cafe, pistachio latte, or Calip certified green juice, and get ready because today we're going to be discussing some royalty with the cast. These bonus episodes will be in two parts. Today, we have Malibu's voice of reason and surrogate mother, Lucy, voiced by the amazing Stephanie Sherry, who actually plays both Lucy and Margaret Sinclair. Hello. Queer icon and Malibu's best friend, Val, voiced by the incredible Francesca Agramonte. Hi. And last but not least, our badass queen herself, Ellis Sinclair, voiced by the one and only Alyssa McKay. Hello. Today, we're going to answer some questions from you, the fans, play some games, and announce some very big news that you won't want to miss. I don't think there's any way to kick off this interview without discussing that jaw-dropping finale when Ella walks in on Reed in bed with Brooke and runs away from Malibu. If you guys could give Ella any advice after that finale, what would you tell her? Alyssa, I'll start with you. Uh, My advice is probably to run because that didn't look like a very good situation. I honestly have no idea how... how, how, Like I I don't have any any thoughts on on what that could have been other than what what it looks like. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, I think she did exactly the right move. I really, I, you know, of course I love that she came to Lucy because (laughs) I think that was the right choice. Um, and I think, I think, I think actually that was really smart of her and she knew what she was doing, you know, while she was obviously wanting to do her due diligence and be like, I'm not going to be showing up to work. Sorry. It was actually, I think very smart. She could have easily just taken off and not stop there. And I think she really wanted someone to know where she was. So she was running away in a very smart, safe, one step ahead, like strategic way, which I think is very much how Ella always operates. She's always kind of one step ahead of everyone else until this moment. And I think this is probably the first time she's been this blindsided, in this specific way. And I, I just, I'm really curious to hear what Francesca thinks. Cause I think Val really deserved a phone call. That's literally what I was going to say. I was, I just remember when I heard it, I was like, I was like, Oh, <laughs> she needed to call me and we needed to just like pull up on him because he needs to be held accountable, you know? And like, I don't know. She gave him all the chances in the world and he deserved to get smacked one or two times. I don't condone violence, but he earned it. (laughs) What do we think about Ella kissing Easton on the way out? Do you think that was just like an impulse decision? Do you think it was more of like a friendly kiss, more of a romantic kiss? (laughs) That's so funny to me. That was a kiss on the cheek. Are we are we officially declaring that was like a kiss? It was a kiss on the lips. Oh, (laughs) oh, wow. Okay, we don't have to include this. But to me, it was like it was like a bye. Oh, it was a kiss. It was like interesting, but it was like it, it, the way it sounds. It wasn't like a full yeah. like French kiss. I think it was a it was a it was, a, it big was a kiss. It was a big. Pack. I mean, my girl, she keeps these two on their toes. Okay, she has them both in the palm of their hands. Every time they think they've got a fast one on her, she spur- she spins the block. Okay? I definitely think it was like a little bit of a goodbye kiss, obviously, but like, I, I don't know. I feel like maybe like part, like part of Ella, cause she's so like worked up in that moment. Like, I wonder if like what's going through her head is like, shit, like I picked the wrong brother, you know? And that was like kind of like her way of communicating that a little bit to Easton because she did. I mean, you know, we had that, that that scene where she was like, you were supposed to like break up with me and break my heart, but you didn't. And I wonder if like she kind of knew that Easton did care about her a little bit more than than some of the other girls he had he had been hooking up with. And so that was kind of like her way of rectifying that a little bit. I feel like, yeah, I feel like Reed was never ever honest and Easton was always honest. And it's, I feel like to me, it it felt like a thank you for like just being (laughs) though a dick. So like upfrontly a dick. And I think her number one thing is trust. And I think it's, yeah, I think there was probably so much communicated in that kiss. It's like, thank you. Like, I appreciate you. Also goodbye. Also I'm not mad at you, (laughs) but I am leaving. Do you guys think there's any scenario in which Brooke could be redeemable? Sorry. I, I don't think so. No, absolutely not. When I tell you she's dead to me, like, no, no coming back. This woman, this woman is an adult. Like we're not even talking about like the predator side of this. Like, ugh. honestly, I think she's an embarrassment. She waited. Did you know she waited till <laughs> she's an embarrassment to women everywhere. It was his 18th birthday yeah. too. I don't know how many people caught on that detail. Ah, she's gross. 
Let's talk a little bit about some behind the scenes moments. You guys all had such great chemistry. What was it like working together behind the scenes? Do you guys, do you guys have any memories that come to mind that, that stick out during the <laughs> recording have process? One that immediately comes to mind when <laughs> Matt made Francesca beatbox freestyle <laughs> rap for a minute straight and then it didn't I even make this. it into the episode. <laughs> It was like two seconds. It was so funny. I have like the whole video and I always refer back to it. It's like one of my favorite moments ever. We were having a ball. It was like the second we you, met. It was really impressive. Wait, that's so sad. Oh, where where did okay. it go? It's okay. It can leave. <laughs> we can leave it out. I'll work on my rapping skills if there's a season two uh, for right now. Stephanie, what about you? Any memories that stick out? Oh my God. I mean, the minute... I felt like the, I don't know if this is literally true, but it feels like the minute Alyssa and I met, we like hugged. That was true. We might have hugged. We also might have not, but it might have just felt like a warm hug. I think we, I think it, I just, it was just like, oh, no, really. I mean, you know, the reality of recording this is that you bang out a bunch of things at once. And I personally did literally all of my work in one session. And so it was just like a whirlwind of two hours. I went from literally meeting Alyssa, hi, hello, hi, to like literally going through Lucy's entire arc with her in the span of like two hours. And by the end, like that final scene, like, I, like I, I saw her tearing up. I saw her crying and I was absolutely like, it didn't even feel like acting to me by the end. Yeah. Well, uh, piggybacking off that, as soon as I, me and Stephanie met each other, it was like, I was like, you are my mother. Like you were my soulmate. Like, <laughs> like we just connected so like strongly so quickly. And, and I, I, I remember so specifically, cause yeah, we had to record. I was literally late. I was like getting ready to like leave that night. I was flying back, back to New York that night. And, um, and just like every scene that I, that I, me and Stephanie had together, it was just so, everything was just so moving. And, and it was one of the only times I did cry in the booth was my, it was my scenes with, with Stephanie. Cause it was, we just had a great connection immediately. Same thing with Francesca too. We all got along really well. Yeah. I remember they had us redo the scene where we meet. Because they're like, you guys sound like you know each other already. <laughs> like, you guys are just so happy to be around each other. I was like, <laughs> oh, yeah. We just, like, instantly clicked. And we were just in there, like, dancing. Anytime you heard us, like, doing a movement, we were really doing it. Like, it was just yeah. instantly we connected. <laughs> to set some context for the audience, because they probably don't realize, I mean, we recorded the whole season in f four days, right? And all of, these, all of the scenes were not in order. So a lot of the times it would be a scene from like episode 12 or 13 that you're recording the first day that's really personal or really steamy. And then a few days later, you have to record the scene where you're meeting that character. So you really have to snap in and out of, of scenes very quickly. And you guys did a great job of doing that. And I know we were on a super tight schedule too. I think most scenes we only did like three takes. Yeah. Is that right? Yeah. Something like that. What was your favorite scene to record? I think... <laughs> I mean, we had so much fun doing these scenes. I'm not kidding. But I think it has to be, I think it's episode six, uh, like hot girls who tip the bouncer. The scene oh, where we're like yeah. going yes, into yes, the club. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it was just so fun. Like we, I feel like we really saw what was happening and we're just like, we're in the club. We're dancing when we were before when we're like taking a shot to get, to go out to pregame. It was just like, those moments were so fun. Like, we were dancing. We were just jumping around in there. They're like, do what you want. <laughs> I think one of my favorite scenes, I had to think about it because I have like a lot of favorite scenes. But I think one of my, my absolute all-time favorite scenes was when um, Valerie and Ella and Savannah like team up to take David down. Um, it was just so fun. Uh, one of the funniest uh, moments for me is Valerie, like trying to pretend to be into men to seduce David. <laughs> and you can tell that she is just, like, you're built like a strong investment banker. Like that's my favorite line. Amazing line. Yeah, it was, that was by far one of my favorite scenes. <laughs> she has some of the funniest lines in yeah. the entire show. Yeah. Val the just, writing like, was so me. just real. Like it was just very... Something that everybody would naturally say. I think the Lucy storyline is very like cute and kind of like together. And I feel like the whole thing was amazing. But I will say my favorite scene 
is in episode eight when we, I feel like a lot of our scenes are kind of like exposition or, you know, like big moving the plot forward moments. But I think my, my favorite scene actually is where it's a little more lived in. And that's when they're just like discussing boys and like giving her advice. And, she, you know, we're talking, I'm like, oh, don't like mm-hmm. the bad ones. Oh, bah, 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 bah. You know, being, I like the wise <laughs> fairy godmother scene, which is, that's what exactly. I call it in my head is episode Episode eight, when when she's like coming to her for advice, being like, should it feel like this? And yeah. I'm like, probably not. What about hardest scenes to record? I know, Alyssa, you you probably had the most. Was there one that stands out to you? Um, Yeah, by far the most difficult scene for me was with uh, with David, the scene where, where David um, attacks Ella. It was, it's actually funny because I, I didn't think like going into it, I was like, okay, this is intense and this is heavy, but I, I actually like doing those scenes because it, it, I feel like it evokes a lot of emotion out of me personally. And, and so I, I like exploring that. And, um, I remember the first time we shot that scene, everyone's silent and they're like, are you good? Yeah. And I'm like, yeah, I'm good. I'm totally fine. Second scene, we or the second take, we do it, and everyone's silent, and I just burst into tears because it just felt so real. And I just remember like everyone came and hugged me, and it was just like, it was, like, it was definitely, it was definitely the most most difficult, but um, very fun to 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 record. I don't know if I'm like allowed to say that, but it, I I like filming very high high stakes scenes. It's a challenge mm-hmm. as an actor. Are there any TV or movie characters you guys took inspiration from when you were preparing for your roles? <laughs> I, um, I, a lot of, um, Ella, I, I see in Fiona Gallagher from Shameless, if you guys have seen that. Um, okay. so that, that was probably the character I, I, I drew the most inspiration from cause you know, she's tough and, you know, kind of doing a lot of this on her own. I think for me, when I, just when I read the audition sides, I automatically thought euphoria and just pictured this world with all these people. And I was like, I'm the Maddie of Euphoria. <laughs> like, that's who I am. I'm coming through. When I walk in, you know who I am. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. How about you, Stephanie? I so agree. I so agree. Um, she was definitely, Lucy especially, was like absolutely chessy from Parent Trap. Oh my for God. Sure. Yes. <laughs> you kind of sound like her. You kind of look like her. Oh, my God. <laughs> Thank you. Um, yeah, just, you know, you know, where she's like, you know, what, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not looking at her funny, you know, <laughs> you know, whatever. I feel like that it's Chessie meets like Natasha Leone, you know, Russian okay. doll, Natasha Leone, yeah. Orange is the New Black, Natasha yeah. Leone, like, you know, the kind of like, I'm from New York, da, 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 mm-hmm. meets, meets like the warm and fuzzy Chessie, which by the way, is really just me. I'm not that, I'm not transforming so far, but you know, I definitely don't have as thick of an accent as Lucy does. I do have a slight New York accent because that is where I'm from. But uh, yeah, that's definitely. And then also, um, I really, I feel bad. I'm not giving Margaret uh, enough uh, of a moment. There's like a part in episode two where I like read a letter to Mm. Ella and it's really, it's like a really like soft, maternal place that I, I I don't have kids you know I, I don't even have younger siblings like I'm a twin and so it's like it, it really is amazing when a different part of you like comes out that you didn't know of and I think again this isn't answering the inspiration question but it actually I think ties to what Alyssa you were saying of like sometimes the more difficult scenes they're fun meaning like exciting because they're bringing up parts of you that you didn't even know were there and like how how amazing that through doing what we love to do and by doing our jobs, we grow as people like uh, I can talk about it for hours. Yeah, you learn yeah. more about yourself. Yeah. All right. So let's move on to some fan questions. We literally have gotten thousands. So I'm sorry to all the fans that we could not answer your questions for. We did have a lot of very similar questions. So hopefully your question will be answered to some extent with the ones we chose. But to start off, this is from Bella from Spotify. Would you guys date any of the characters in real life? And if so, who? Um, I'm, I, I would, I would date Valerie. I, I think, I, oh my God, I that's that, what I was going to say. I was just like, I would date Ella. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes I'm, I'm, you guys. Yeah, uh, I, I'm, a, I'm a big uh, Vela, Vela stan. Same. <laughs> yeah, I, I too ship Vela. Yeah, I would definitely date Ella because like, it's just the perks of dating women. You're BFF. Like, why not? <laughs> I feel like they're just also like the most confident, most stable as yeah, well. Yeah. Like all these guys, they have so many 
issues they need they need to work oh out they need God, to see yeah. a therapist first and then maybe we can reevaluate <laughs> oh yeah yeah my gut reaction was val as well i was like it's val like she's the for, it feels weird to say because i'm like i'm i'm in my 30s and they're like you know children but like uh i don't want to i don't want to pull a brook but uh yeah val for sure and definitely deaf val also like i'm sorry like callum problematic like i just think like there i i really you know what you know what it's lucy Lucy, you guys, yeah. if you're coming from an adult perspective, like just the adult yeah. characters, Lucy, <laughs> duh. A little bit of, a little bit more fan love for Lucy because like <laughs> literally the most well-adjusted adult on that show. However, in teen land, Val. <laughs> Sorry, Ella, but Val. No, I get it. I get it. It is funny going back. I mean, we get a lot of DMs, especially for people that are not in their teens or 25 and above. There's been a lot of team Callums. Wow. Whenever I ask Team Reed or Team Easton, we've gotten a lot of Team Collins. Oh, I think it's the voice. Armin has such an alluring voice. I could For just sure. listen to him to read like anything. So alluring. I was like, oh. Yeah. <laughs> like, read the dictionary to me. <laughs> no, literally, I, I had a viewing party. And I had a viewing party with a oh, bunch of my friends, fun. late 20s, early 30s. And they were like... They were, oh, it was so fun. And they were like, okay, but like, yeah. Zaddy, though. Like, all of them were like, this Ella <laughs> Ella I was like, no. <laughs> <laughs> so funny. Anyway. All right. Moving on to a question from Catherine on Spotify. How long does it take you guys to memorize your lines? I didn't memorize any of my lines. I, I just read them straight off the page. Yeah. <laughs> Plus That's the perks of doing voice work. Of us. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But it's kind of fun because in at least in my experience, when we would do a scene over and over again, I just started kind of not I wouldn't like change the lines. But I just kind of started throwing in like the way I think Ella would say it maybe in like different takes. So I guess after like you you do it a few times, you kind of have a, a like a basic understanding of the scene and what's being said. And you can kind of ad lib from there. Um, but yeah, we're reading for the most part. Yeah, they gave us the freedom, though, to like, you know, put punch in words that we felt were more accurate. And then, you know, we would all be like, we're all in the booth together. So we're like looking at each other. So parts of it we would memorize, I mm -hmm. feel like, but not all of it. That's a good segue into our next question from Aksher from Spotify. He asked, do you guys record your scenes together or separately? Maybe we can paint the picture a little bit about what that recording process is like for you guys. Um, I think most of the time we did record the scenes together when we could. We could only fit three people in the booth. So if it was like a four person scene, I think what we would do is whoever had like the least amount of lines in that scene, we'd put them in like the isolation <laughs> booth. It was like the their dungeon. punishment. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the dungeon. It was the worst. <laughs> I was like, wow. I never wow. had to be in there. I was so curious. I was so sad when they were like, okay, Valerie's in the isolation booth. I was like, what? No, I need my girl with me. I know. I didn't know that. That's horrible. Yeah, that, it's literally in a separate room. A small separate room. It's like completely, you're you don't, not, you don't even. anyone. Yes. Anyone who was in that booth at any given time, they sounded so sad. Like just so depressed. Yeah. That's real acting, you guys. Those, those yeah. are the MVPs. Well, the first like three days I was in the booth with Alyssa and when, uh, you guys, we were having so much fun. Even when she was having the scenes with the boys, like I was in the middle, like, like yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's actually now thinking back, that was probably my favorite scene because I was like, oh, they're really like really about to go at it. <laughs> I, I like, I love your line where you're like, I call shotgun. You boys are in trouble anyway. It, it's just so like that just embodies the who Valerie is. I feel. Gamer Tiger from Apple asks, at what age did you guys begin voice acting and were you nervous on the first day? Um, so actually, yeah, well, I started like acting in general when I was like, I want to say 14 when I was like a freshman in, in high school. Um, and I actually never thought about like voice work. Like I just have never auditioned for any voice work. This was like my first voice acting job that I ever did. And I was so scared. I, I, I was having such anxiety. I could not eat that morning. I thought I was going to vomit the entire time. And every single person like Nick, Chris, um, Armin, all of them, after I did my first scene, they come out and they're like, I'm just going to let you know now when I heard this was your first job, I was not looking forward. Like they were, they thought that like, maybe I would not be very good. <laughs> I mean, rightfully so that's fine. And they were like, but I'm like very impressed. Like I'm pleasantly surprised. So I was really scared, but after like people maybe feel better about it after I went in and did it, um, I, it was less scary. Yeah. I could not believe when she told me that was her first job. 
like at the end of the first day, I was like, how do you still have a voice? Like, wow, you're doing so much dialogue, like so much. And she's so good. And she goes up, she goes down. She was like, it's just so good. And so much range too. You're doing a fight scene one minute and the next moment you're doing a makeout scene. And the next moment you're doing an emotional flashback scene with your mom. It's, it's hard to, it's hard to do all of that. And especially in the first time you're doing it. So very impressive. I started voiceover work like a year or two ago, two years ago, I think. And I've done like all kinds of stuff now, but this was my first podcast. And like, it was so nice to like walk in there like, oh, you're all together. And I was like, we're doing it together. Like I'd never experienced that in voiceover work. So it was just so, it's such a great experience. I've been doing VO stuff professionally probably like, like, uh, like five or six years now and then acting in general for, for longer. But just like Francesca saying, it was absolutely the first time I was with someone in the booth. Like totally had never been in the booth with someone else before. And it's funny because leading up to my session date, I was, you know, I was like stalking everyone. I like followed Alyssa, whatever, whatever. And, you know, I'm seeing like her and like, you know, the Kafara boys like in the thing. And I was like, oh, like, I guess like I'm just probably just going to like be alone. And then I got there and she was there and I was like, ah! <laughs> and I was so happy. And um, yeah, you know, it's like, you know. I do a lot of dubbing and uh, you're just like alone, just, and, and also, you know, for those of you who, who don't know, you know, you're, you know, you, I mean, I think most people have seen kind of like a recording studio. It's like you're behind the glass and, you know, it's, it's very isolating because you're obviously alone, but you're also in this like sound vacuum sealed room with like everyone on another side <laughs> of glass, just like staring at you like it's a fucking aquarium. Oh, can I curse? Sorry. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> you're good. <laughs> can I? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Um, we have a lot but, of curse, uh, cursing yeah. in the episodes. <laughs> Yeah, you know, it, there's just so many things where you, you, and also sometimes in certain studios, you can't even see them, like it's black. And so you just hear someone in your ear being like, all right, again, and you're like, <laughs> okay, like, it's just, you know, I guess, I mean, who knows, maybe that's what the isolation booth, the isolation booth felt like. And we can make a parent trap reference here with the isolation <laughs> cabin, I guess is how it felt to be in that <laughs> random like. other booth you guys used. But yeah, but uh, Alyssa and I were together in our own happy yeah. dreamland for an afternoon, so... All right. Emma from Spotify asked, if you guys actually went to the Cove, what friend group do you think you'd belong to? I'd be part of the outcast with Valerie. I uh, strongly suspect. And that is my answer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think I'd be in the crew that I'm in. Honestly, like same, same, same. Those people are cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs. And my crew where I feel like we're the most sane, <laughs> like cool, level yes. headed people. <laughs> Love it. All right. William from Spotify asks, if you could be any character from the show for just one day, who would it be? Uh, I'm going to have to say Ella. Um, maybe after she inherits the $100 million, preferably. <laughs> but yeah. I also would say Ella. She lives a very adventurous life. She doesn't say no to things. She doesn't hold back. She's cool. She's very cool. <laughs> Yeah, I think I think peak Ella, peak Ella having inherited peak money Ella. in the Lexus, <laughs> driving down PCH. That's where peak Ella. That's where I'd like to you be, don't like be airdropped Ella in the stolen in. Tesla. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. I, I feel like peak Ella is just that 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 very small amount of time in between her inheriting a hundred million dollars and then re cheating on her. <laughs> it's like yeah, that's small, like, damn, like so small. Yeah, she's like, oh, I have like a boyfriend. Is. Everything's Boom. great. It's that scene when. Val and Ella are at the pier getting the lobster rolls. Oh everything God. is perfect yeah. for the first time in the entire season and then yeah. everything goes Our to shit. The only problem is mayo. But for that moment. <laughs> That's the yeah. only problem. Yeah. Mayo versus butter. No, I know. I'm a butter gal. <laughs> it's a big debate. As an East Coaster, it's a real, oh, it's a real thing. I've never had either. So I... Wait, Emma, 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 what do you mean? I think I've had a lobster roll like one time in I've my life like and- once. I don't know what was on it. I don't like lobster. Yeah. I think go. they're overhyped. To the Santa Monica Pier we go. The best part is the bread, really. <laughs> like any, any good bread with butter is just so good. I'll have to try them again. <laughs> yeah. Alyssa, were you going to say something else? Yeah, but sorry. It was like really unrelated. I just got reminded when you were talking about um, us doing the roller skating scene at the pier. <laughs> like it refers to like five questions back. But another one of my favorite scenes was when me and Valerie did the hiking scene. And yeah. Matt had to keep telling us like yes. you guys have to be huffing and puffing like you're hiking. So we were like <laughs> so, like jog, like just like stomping in place. <laughs> like, like breathing so heavy while just not going anywhere. And that was like a really fun scene issue. I just yeah. like thought of that. 
<laughs> All right. This next question might be the most asked question we've gotten. Very important. Vera asks from Spotify, are you team Reed or team Easton? Oh, team E. Oh, they both are. I don't know. I was gonna say team Easton, but because again, at least mm-hmm. Easton's honest. Yeah. So problematic. He also sucks. Why are these my only yeah. options? That's what I want to know. Like, why do I have to pick one? I, I know there's say. no <laughs> team Val. Yeah. I know we'd all choose that. But. <laughs> well, that's what's so funny. It's like, pick between these two, like, definitely, like, traumatized, problematic men or the woman who has great advice, yeah. is emotionally <laughs> mature. But no. All right. So we got Team Easton from Stephanie. Alyssa, what's your vote? I vote Team Easton. He's got potential. Yeah. I'm going to have to go Easton, too. Team Easton wins all yeah, three. Just because wow. of the finale. Yeah. 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 I didn't see it coming. <laughs> and honestly, before the finale, like, like, Reed is just so, like, he's so, like, oh, I'm, I'm so, it's like, <laughs> handle your shit. Be an adult. I understand you're a child, but it's like, like, not only was that Brooke situation problematic, but not to be, like, pro-Reed, but, like, Brooke was obviously a predator- to in that situation for sure and other than that i think reed is just like so uh, so unwilling to accept responsibility in a way that easton actually though problematic was exactly like i feel for reed i totally feel for him but like you can't be held accountable ever (laughs) it's always someone else's fault like what the heck (laughs) he also didn't run after her like he didn't run after her why because he's wrong Last question. Victoria from Spotify asks, what do you wish for your characters after this season? Peace, love, happiness, no drama. Ella just, I wish for Ella, for her and, and Valerie and all the people that she loves to just run away into her own little mansion and just live her life away from the Royals. That's my opinion as of right now, just because of the finale. That could change, but. Amen, sister. I want the same. I want peace, love. I want my girl to come back. I want for us to just have fun, (laughs) play our video games, like, and just have a good time, dance all night. Yeah, I want, I want, I want Lucy to continue to be a source of comfort and support and like reason for Ella. I hope that they maintain that relationship. And also, I am very invested and I have not let go that someone destroyed my shop. Who was that? (laughs) <laughs> I like uh, hello like oh it might be David now David's what I just rebuilt it like excuse me where's it's my whole improvement redemption Malibu. arc like <laughs> I'm not over that Ella got her revenge Lucy needs her revenge <laughs> I very much want Lucy to obviously you know continue to have a relationship with Ella but I want her to definitely I would love for her to find love for her to find a partner I would love like I'm saying for her to figure out who vandalized the shop and get revenge. I think a Lucy Val, like kind of how Val and Ella were like, all right, uh, uh, you know, I'm around the corner. Like when you were doing the like detective thing, going to the fight club, I think it'd be so funny for Val and Lucy to like, while Ella's away, team up and be like, all right, let's figure out like what really happened here. And it'll probably tie back to Ella. I would imagine. Um, So that could be interesante, but but yes, I, I also would love for her to find love because I think she's great. Agreed. Yeah, a, a Val, Lucy, Ella trio. Yes, unstoppable. unstoppable. Like truly. I love all the girl power on this show. All right, now it's time for some fun and games. This first game we'll be playing is called Which Character? I'm going to give you guys a scenario and you're going to tell me which character you would choose. Okay. All right, ready? Okay. Which character would you call if you were arrested? Valerie. Valerie. <laughs> I'm going to say Lucy. I mean, true. Yeah, she is. She is. She Lucy is an adult. Lucy has money. Yeah. She, All good options. I, I was going to say, yeah. doesn't Valerie also not have a car? So how is she even going to get to her? I think Valerie <laughs> will grow into becoming a Lucy, you know? Like, she'll have the wisdom yeah. and all the things that you need when you're in trouble. <laughs> you, I'm telling you, like, we are the duo that, like, this girl needs. Because you need the, like, capability and the 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 personality. Together. Fun. Which character would you choose to go backpacking around Europe with? Oh. Alyssa. <laughs> like, any day. Val. <laughs> I guess, I, yeah, I'd have to say, am I allowed to pick myself, Ella? <laughs> I, Ella. I, I, yeah. yeah. Ella. Ella, yeah. She's so fun. Like She has $100 million. 
<laughs> and, well, she's got a hundred million dollars, so yeah, I'm gonna pick her too. <laughs> but no, she's so adventurous, you know. She doesn't like yeah. She doesn't let things stop her from doing what she wants. Yeah, I feel like she would make sure you see all of the sights. You get the most value yeah, out yeah. of your trip. Interesting. Hot <laughs> take. Hot take. Oh, we love a Wait, hot take. I'm sorry. Perhaps. Per- I said Val because I just think she's so funny. And I do love Ella. However, hot take. Savannah. Oh. Savannah would probably like figure out a way to get you in the back door of like some exclusive. I don't know. Savannah. I feel like she wouldn't want to do the whole hostel thing and all that because it'd probably yeah. be too dirty for her. But I feel like that's kind of the fun of backpacking Europe. You know, like if you want the real raw young person experience backpacking Europe, Savannah would be great if you're like in your 50s and 60s and you want to stay in the nice <laughs> resorts and she has the whole spa yeah. package ready to go. Savannah all the way. But if you're 20 years old, yeah, I would say Ella. All right. Who would you want by your side if you were getting robbed? Robbed? Sorry. That's just such an intense scenario. Yeah. Reed. <laughs> like if you're if you're walking down the street oh, yeah, at night. Reed. You'll kick <laughs> I mean, that's where Reed shines. That's where Reed shines. We'll get yeah. we'll give Reed this one. <laughs> we'll give him that. The dude can punch a dude. You yeah, know? you better use put that anger to, to use. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Take those anger issues out on someone who's attacking me. Thank you. And I I do think that he would stand up for everyone. Like, I don't think he would just oh, let yeah. people get one over his people. Who would you want to teach you how to surf? Easton. I feel like that's like, he's just, he's just fun. It'd he's be fun. fun. And I, I feel like Reed would be just a little too, like, obviously, what I, I feel like he'd be a little too serious about it. But Easton, I feel like he's the type to have fun with it. and, and But actually teach you at the same time. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. Yes, that's a oh Easton's a good backpacking buddy yeah. too. That's a good Ooh, one. Easton yeah. would have been very fun. You might end up in a foreign country's jail yeah, Easton yeah, though. Yeah, exactly. Locked up abroad. Yeah, that's true. Which character do you think you could beat in a fight? That I like personally as myself could beat in a fight. Yeah. Savannah. I could I definitely was kick say her Savannah ass. too. <laughs> <laughs> Especially after the pool scene. Definitely Savannah. <laughs> Not Brooke. That bitch cannot fight. Oh yeah. yeah no. Brooke. Oh, Brooke. Brooke. Yeah. I would have the most passion against a fight with her. <laughs> it would bring out more strength in me. I don't know. Savannah's evolved a lot. You know who I could beat in a fight? Who? Dina. Oh, oh. yeah. <laughs> that is who I could realistically <laughs> beat in a fight. Yeah. The woman who sounds like she's British royalty. <laughs> she's a bit of a wild card. We're still learning a little bit more about her. She really was a wild card. Which character is most likely to be president one day? Valerie. Yeah. Val. <laughs> I was going to say Ella. Valerie or Reed. Because I know Reed also says he wants to like get into politics or whatever, but I just feel like Valerie's got like the, I don't want to say girth. I don't think that's the right word, but you know what I'm saying? Like she's just got the, that X factor to be president. The fire. fire. Valerie like right. stands up for people, you know? She's got the gusto. I think Reed has like the backstory for it, you know, where he's seen so many things and I can see him yeah. like turning his life around and like doing real good in the world okay which character would you want to be stuck on an island with if you had to be ella duh. i always whenever these questions come up i want to say valerie but i always envision it as like me like ella and valerie together like as a package <laughs> yeah. so i feel like i'm answering as like ella but again i'm gonna have to say Va- ah i don't know i feel like ella has street smarts though so she might be able to like have the knowledge to like like how to start a fire and stuff that's like what, this, you know that's what i was gonna say ella i'm like she will find us food yeah she'll find us food she'll yeah. build us a house like she's gonna figure it out for us <laughs> and she and francesca says and i'm just gonna sit back and get a tan and <laughs> and I'm gonna sure. i will make sure that you are entertained <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, half of it's personality, someone you want to spend a lot of time with, and the other half is survival skills. Who do you think, who's going right. to help keep you alive? I vote Ella, yeah. Ella, for sure. She's also not, she's not going to, like, complain about it. She's not going to be like, oh, yeah. my God. Like, you know, Easton <laughs> will be such a baby. He'd be like, why did this happen to me? You know, like, I just think <laughs> Ella's going to be like, okay, yeah. uh, when you do this, when you do this, yep. when you do this. And, yeah, I completely agree. Ella, Ella all the way. All right, last question. Which character would you donate a kidney for? Oh, well, now I'm just like every answer <laughs> from me is <laughs> I know. The silence is just so loud. Um, I want to say, yeah, I'm saying Ella just because she came from such a rough spot and she really worked right. hard. And, I, and she's so kind hearted. And But I mean, you could say that about a lot. You could say that about Lucy and Valerie as well. So I, 
and a lot of them, a lot of the other characters. So it's tough. I say Ella because she just like deserves to live the good life for a chunk of time. You know, she's just had so many trials and I think that that would be another trial that she would overcome and she just, mm. she deserves to be a millionaire. You know? Yeah. I think Ella's, Ella's it. I agree. Moving on to our last game, trivia. Okay. Oh All right, let's see God. how much you guys remember from the show. <laughs> These questions are going to get harder as we go. Alyssa's going to win. Alyssa, if you don't I, win. I will be so disappointed. Girl, I think you're going to win. Just yell the answer. We don't have buzzers, so just yell the answer if you know it. Okay. Great. All right, question number one. What game do Ella and Val play together the night they meet? Super Smash Bros. Ding, ding, ding. Right? <laughs> Am I yeah. right? <laughs> yes. One for Alyssa. All right, question two. What was Reed and Easton's mother's name? Oh, uh, I don't know. I Is it ever said? It is said. I don't think it's said. Are there trick questions? No. Oh. I can give you a hint. <laughs> Starts with an M. Is it Margaret? It's not, right? Because that's my mom. Mm-hmm. No, that's my name. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, doesn't Callum say it? Maria. Yes. He says it on the jet, right? Yep. He says it on the private plane yep. in like the first episode. Yes. Oh, I that that, that was really good. My mind. That was <laughs> good. From the first episode, yeah. That was good. a good one. Question three: What accessory makes Ella trust Callum? Her. This is an episode her one. Dad's watch. The same watch. Yeah. Yes. The watch. Yep. Another point for Alyssa. Question four: What type of drink does hungover Easton bring for Ella from the Treasure Cafe? The pistachio <laughs> milk latte. <laughs> I yep. feel so bad. Yeah, pistachio <laughs> latte. Duh. I feel like I should not answer. I know. I, like, I know. I'm like, I go for it, but I'm like, she got, she got it. <laughs> no, literally, I'm just like, Alyssa. <laughs> <laughs> We're serving them to you. We're volleying them over. What are the Cove Academy's school bells modeled after? The Winminster min- Chimes. Right? Win, win, Close. Win, 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 win. Close. <laughs> Westminster? Westminster. Stephanie got it. Westminster Chimes. West, it's the Big Ben. Westminster. I, you know, it was a big assist from Melissa. <laughs> well, at least you said it right. I, I, I said Westminster. <laughs> it's like an enemy. Yeah. Well, Alyssa already has four points, so we'll yeah. get Stephanie one. I don't need another one. Thank you. I've actually answered many, but not, but not quick enough. All right. What type of car does Callum gift Ella? A royal blue Lexus. A Lexus. Yes. Alyssa got it first. What kind of car does Brooke drive? Porsche. Yep, Brooke. that is correct. All right, last question, or second to last question. <laughs> what part of LA does Dinah live in? I don't know, Beverly Hills. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, we could just guess. The rich part. Yeah. Where else would she that live? That would make sense. It would make sense for her to live in Beverly Hills, but she doesn't. I thought she had like a condo in downtown LA, but I think I'm just remembering the club. DT, yeah, DT LA. LA. In DT LA. <laughs> it, is, it is a condo. It's a penthouse. Hmm. Brett, wasn't it Brentwood? Closer. I, I I don't live there, so I have no idea what these places are. So is it Santa Monica? So it's Santa Monica. <laughs> like, Santa Monica. Yeah, I, was, I, I got a pity point. Like, I could be anywhere. <laughs> Francesca got a point. Good job. I didn't know that one. Like, I, oh, I don't remember ever hearing the location. I thought it was Santa Monica, but then I was like, what? It's it? a very minor detail <laughs> in the script. That's what was the last question. Oh, it, it's tricky. Yeah, that was hard. All right, guys. Now it's time for a bonus question. Mm-hmm. Bonus, bonus. What is happening early fall 2023 <laughs> dare we say dare you say can we say it all together now season two season two season two, season two. Season two. <laughs> baby <laughs> I love What's it, it going to be? We don't know. <laughs> yes, it's the official announcement. Season two is coming late summer, early fall 2023. So stay tuned for a few more months and oh. we'll be back officially. Yay. The final point score, Stephanie with one, Francesca with one, and Alyssa with six. So I think Alyssa is our winner. Congratulations. <laughs> You get bragging rights. We knew she was going to <laughs> As Easton would say, that's lit. Stephanie, Francesca, Alyssa, thank you all so much for being here today and for your killer work on the show. I can't wait to get back in the studio for season two. We're writing it right now. And let me just say, it's really juicy. Would you guys like to tell everyone where they can follow you? Alyssa McKay on everything. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Francesca Milagros on Instagram. And I'm It's Steph Sherry on everything. <laughs> 
All right, guys. Well, stay tuned for next week as Alyssa returns with Chris and Nick Cafaro, the real life actors who play Reed and Easton Royal. You won't want to miss it. All right, guys. Thank you Thank so much. You. That was so that fun. That was really fun. Yay.